Hey, what's up everybody? Daniel here from Never Enough Tech. You know, my arms are tired. I'm going to step away from soundbars for a minute. I'm still going to talk about audio, but it's going to be at a smaller, more personal scale in this video. Something I've barely touched on with this channel is my fetish for weird personal audio devices. Well, regular ones too, but I'm talking weird ones right now. Specifically, audio sunglasses. Even more specifically, the Bose frames. I got the Bose Frames Alto right here, just about when it was released, January 2019, here in the US. I've continually been satisfied with the Alto, with a minor modification I'll discuss later. I'll just take a leap and say the Alto is amongst the best sounding sunglasses out there. That is, no other big headphone brand has released a competing product. No Sony sound shades for you to consider. Clearly, this is an experimental category, which generally means, let's release, cross our fingers, and see if it's worth releasing a Gen 2, where we can maybe start making a serious product category. Well, I suppose there were enough weirdos out there buying this product, as Bose has gone ahead and decided a second generation is warranted. In this video, I'll compare a first generation and second generation Bose frames. I'll be focusing on, I think, their most ambitious, most contrasting product from their Gen 1 frames. So what do I have here? The Bose Alto, a first gen, lifestyle-oriented design, versus the Bose Tempo, their second generation activity-oriented model. After this video, I hope, you'll have the information you need to make an educated buying decision. If you're new to the channel, you should be aware that I like to make these videos sporty. With a scoreboard. Up it goes. Our first category, price. The two Gen 1 models, Alto and Rondo, are $200. All three Gen 2 models are $250. I think this is a pretty reasonable price range. Furthermore, Gen 2 is, let's say, $130 less than the Bose 700s, Bose's flagship and most expensive headphones. So for $380, you could get the Bose Tempo and a nice pair of wireless earbuds, if that's what you're looking to spend. The Alto gets a few points for price. Uh... Size and weight, you have three sizes. The Alto comes in two sizes, a Schmedium, and what we have here is a Lardium, which is about 4% bigger than the Schmedium. The Tempo has about 6% more volume than the Alto. The speaker housing is noticeably bigger on the Tempo, which I suppose is both good and bad. With the Alto having a max speaker height of 0.75 inches and the Tempo coming in at one inch. The length of the bulky section is about 2.5 inches on the Tempo and about three inches on the Alto. But just take a look at the difference in speaker size. The grill looks to be about a third longer on the Tempo and about twice as wide. That larger speaker size is probably associated with some advantages. Make no mistake, with the Tempo, you're putting a much more voluminous object on your head. You might at this point be concerned that the Tempo will be too big for your head. These are definitely not loose on me, nor my more travel-sized wife. It's much more likely that these will be too tight than too loose. You can see how the Tempo really tapers at the end and is flexible. This is a major component of how it fosters stability. All that being said, less bulk is better, so the Alto gets the point. Try not to, uh... The other two Gen 2 lifestyle models, the Soprano and Tenor, mimic the Alto on size. The Tempo is uniquely bulky. Wait, the Alto is 159 ounces. The Tempo is 1.76 ounces. So the Tempo is about a fifth of an ounce heavier. Obviously, weight is important, but maybe not really noticeable, as the weight is spread over a larger area. The other two Gen 2 models, though a little smaller, are the same weight of the tempo. Nonetheless, Alto gets the point in the weight comparison. <coughs> Build quality. Both are constructed of a highly engineered lightweight nylon plastic material. I think the plastic is specialized a bit to decrease weight, which can make the plastic feel a little less dense, maybe disqualifying them from having a more premium feel. The Alto does at least try to add some material intrigue to the product with gold-plated stainless steel hinges. Though these accents are only visible when say sitting on the desk as the gold plate is on the inside of the stems. The control button and magnetic charging port is also plated in gold. So a pop of color on otherwise a sea of black semi-transparent plastic. Though to be honest, I've never noticed the transparency until this review. The Tempo seems to remove all exposed metal and transparency. There is not really a clear build quality difference. Though I suppose I will give the Altos the win with a gold plated metal hinge. I have not forgotten about the lenses. I'll get to them in a different section. Style. So you know how good looking people can make anything look good. The Tempo, if not breaking this rule, is applying a severe level of stress to it. 
You wear the tempo because, well, you have a hierarchy of goals. You want to work out outside in the sun. You want audio. You want your sunglasses to feel secure on your head. You want to find love. You want to do your laundry. Way down the list, you want to look fashionable. Right under would be hanging out with your dentist and or preparing your taxes. I think this same sentiment is more or less applied to the alto with wanting your sunglasses to be stylish, holding the same level of urgency as visiting your in-laws. But it is clear the alto is meant to be more stylish with its casual Ray-Ban, late 80s, early 90s timeless style. It's semi-transparency that shows a bit of the inner workings and the reduction in bulkiness. If I were watching this video, I would say this is not a fair comparison. The comparison should really be between the second generation soprano or tenor. From what I can tell, I would say the Gen 1 and Gen 2 lifestyle models are probably equally challenged, but a clear step up from the tempo. Uh. Controls. Both have the button. On both devices, the button handles calls, music play, pause, and track control. For the alto, you can change volume by holding the button and swiping your head. You don't need to necessarily make that sound effect. A long press of the button activates the native voice assistant. So Siri, if you have an iPhone or whatever, and Google Assistant, if you're an Android user. The tempo brings something new to the table with a touch surface on the top right stem here. Swiping forward increases volume. Swiping back decreases volume. Double tap activates the native voice assistant. I'm gonna give the tempo a point here for not turning your neck into a volume knob. Charging, the Alto has a specialized magnetic connector. The magnetic charging wire that comes with the Alto is aggressively short. The Tempo switched to USB-C, but note the other G2 products kept the magnetic charger. The magnetic charger can't win because if you lose it, well, you just bought yourself some funky looking non-audio sunglasses. You know, until you pay Bose to send you another magnetic charger. Tempo gets the point. Lenses, the Tempo comes with polarized lenses. With 12% visual light transmission or VLT, and 99% UVA, UVB blockage. With Alto, the lens material is not specified, though the propaganda on the Alto is an even tint and 99% UVA, UVB blockage. All models, Gen 1 and Gen 2, offer a variety of lenses with different hues and the option for polarization. All lenses are swappable, but the Tempo made it easier to do so. There are prescription options for all models. Look to pay an extra $127 if you go that route. I'm feeling generous, gonna give Tempo two points here for default polarization, less visible light transmission, and an easier swap out mechanism. Comfort. Alto is a bit loose. They don't squeeze your head. I would say my head is a little bigger than the average adult head. I'm actually a really big guy, so my head would look bigger on another person's body. Anyway, that's not really a great visual. The point I'm trying to make is that the Alto might be a little loose for you. As the Alto doesn't really squeeze your head, this kind of means it's up to nose friction to maintain stability. Well, this is where you would like to have some rubber nose pads. These pads don't ship with the Alto, though there is a really cheap way to make the Alto much better. I bought these stick-on nose pads and it reduced my stability concerns by about 80%. I put a link to these nose pads in the description. I'm not sponsored, but it is an affiliate link. The tempo here gives you a much tighter squeeze from the side. This is not surprising as they are not really shaped for casual use. If you don't like glasses kind of squeezing your head from the side, these audio sunglasses are simply not for you. Though a benefit of the squeeze is that it leads to very little weight on your nose. Nonetheless, the tempo doubled down on stability and provided sleek interchangeable nose pads, three different sizes which further contribute to these things sticking to your head. The Tempo, even though it seems to be amongst the most bulky sunglasses out there, might as well be super glued to your head. Exercise with confidence. I don't recommend doing that. The Gen 2 lifestyle models, just like the Gen 1s, do not come with a nose pad. Anecdotally, extended use of the Tempo led to perhaps moderate discomfort Though this discomfort probably would not meet noticeable pain thresholds if you're exercising rigorously. I'm also really wimpy when it comes to headphones. These kinds of headphones cause me a lot more discomfort than the Tempos, just up here. Do you ever get a pain up here? So if you can wear these over-ear headphones all day, you are probably golden. The Tempo is clearly more intense in terms of its fit, like it should be, but I have to give the comfort point to Alto. Uh... The case, here's the case for the Tempo. 
and these are your replaceable nose pads. It also comes with a cleaning cloth and a zipper. Though it's covered in ballistic nylon, I don't think it will stop a bullet for you. It's a little flexible, so maybe a little bit of give in a bag. I gave up looking for the case on the Alto, but it looks like this. It also comes with a cloth and charging cable. And here's your even shorter USB-C cable for the Tempo. There are no points here. App support. For the Tempo, you got the Bose Music app. Really, it does nothing special for you. Actually kind of anti-special as it seems you just have volume control, software updates, and tips. No EQ adjustments. For the Alta, you have to use the legacy Bose Connect app. There really doesn't seem to be a reason to use the app other than updates as far as I can figure. No EQ support for either product, no points awarded. Now go sit in a corner and criticize yourself. Water resistance. Alto does not provide a water resistance rating. That means I suppose get nervous if it starts to rain or if you like to shower with your sunglasses. I don't judge. The Tempos have an IPX4 rating, which means it's resistant to splashing from any direction. This means if you like to exercise in the rain, do so with confidence. Your Tempos should hold up. Though maybe give them a sexy throw off to the side before diving headfirst into the pool. Point for the Tempo. Sound privacy. For both models, it's okay. If you're sitting next to someone in a quiet room, they may very well kind of be able to hear what you're listening to. As these sunglasses are obviously meant to be used outside, the sound transmission is not really a worry. No one's gonna know what you're listening to as you jog past them. If you're sitting closer to someone whenever that's allowed again, you may decide to turn the volume down a bit. Flexibility of use. Short answer, both models are fine for these two contexts. Lifestyle outside. Perfectly fine for walking, having your eyes shaded, and getting audio. You'll just look a little sillier with the tempos. If you need to go indoors, just flip the glasses up and you get degraded, but you know, decent enough sound. You'll still be able to follow your podcast and vibe with your tunes. You're good. The Tempo really is a specialty product for outdoor exercise. If it were socially acceptable for non-celebrities to wear these glasses inside the gym, then these would be fine for the treadmill as well. If you want sunglasses for exercise, these are really your only option amongst the Bose frames. All the other models are just a little too loose. I'd say Tempo gets the point for giving you a little more flexibility of use. The Tempo has a dual beamforming mic array to enhance your phone conversations. The Tempo introduced a lot of static in the background. I tested a few times and the static was far more pronounced on the Tempo. This is a mic quality test for the Bose Tempo. This is a mic quality test for the Bose Tempo. This is a mic quality test for the Bose Alto. This is a mic quality test for the Bose Alto. Bose has to do something with that. So it disappoints me to say I can't support the tempo for extended conference calls unless you dislike who you're talking to. Not sure what's going on here with the tempo. Pretty disappointing. <laughs> Battery life. Look to get about three hours of continuous listening on the Alto. It's advertised as three and a half hours and expect one and a half to two hours to get it fully charged. From my experience, I got about six hours of continuous playback on the Tempo. Bose is advertising eight hours, and it takes about an hour to get a full charge. So maybe neither of these models are gonna be perfect if you're out all day. Even so, Tempo gets the point. Sound quality. There is no question that Tempo gives you a superior audio experience. It's richer and fuller and better in every way. You get much more detail and much more low end, making the audio much fuller. You don't really start hearing any sound with substance unless you're over 60 Hertz with the tempo. With the Alto, 80 Hertz still sounds really weak. But with the tempo, you are starting to get that bassy feel. All this being said, however, I think you will really be impressed with the tempo sound. See, deep down below your awareness, you don't really have high expectations from your sunglasses. I was surprised I still got the feels from my favorite music. With the Alto, you may not be impressed, but I think you'll be satisfied with the sound. Bottom line though, the tempo, as far as I'm aware, are going to deliver the best audio experience out there amongst the open ear concept head mounted audio devices. I don't typically make these kind of definitive statements about products. Two points for the tempo. 
Gonna take a little detour here and make you ask which open ear concept is best for you. So if you're thinking of buying the Bose frame specifically for the open ear concept, I would like to talk about the pros and cons of at least one alternative form factor. Bone conducting headphones, specifically the Aftershocks Aeropex. I'd say the best consumer oriented bone conducting headset out there. As the form factor suggests, these actually transmit audio through bone. You can easily prove this by covering your ears and you'll find you get much better audio transmission. Earplugs are included with the product for when using in loud places. There are cheaper variants on the Aftershocks website. Not sponsored, though these are my favorite headphones. So here are some reasons you might go with something like bone conducting over the frames. Assuming you're looking for an open ear head mounted personal audio device. So with bone conducting headphones, you can wear with any pre-existing sunglasses or prescription glasses you might wanna wear. They aren't really pretty, but they're a little less noticeable. It's obviously more suitable for indoor use, most notably gyms. Most don't wanna wear sunglasses inside. These are cheaper than the Tempo by about $100. They're lighter, they can hang around your neck, and audio is more private. Some downsides, and they're not necessarily minor. The sound quality is not nearly as good. Bone conducting audio, I'd say, is more easily masked by external noises, so say, loud gym music or traffic. So when walking next to loud traffic, I really can't follow the podcast with the bone conducting headphones. And you know, it doesn't do a very good job blocking sun from destroying my eyes. Though I don't think many really know about this category and I just wanted to give you something to think about. Conclusions. I still really like what Bose is doing here. For someone like me that seems to want to collect headphones, I really like a product that is perfect for certain situations. Biking outside on a sunny day. It's nice to know you have the perfect tool for the job. For someone looking to buy an everyday, every situation kind of headphone, you should turn elsewhere. Which to buy? If bone conducting headphones are not for you, I think it's pretty simple. If you almost always wear sunglasses when exercising and you want the best sound sunglasses can deliver and you don't care too much about fashion, I'd buy the Tempos. They would be as close to a perfect fit into your routine as you're gonna find. If you're looking for a more casual experience, I think the question comes down to casual with good sunglass audio or casual with really good sunglasses audio. If the latter, maybe look for the Gen 2 lifestyle options. Okay, well, I hope the journey was worth it. If you're new to this channel, welcome, and I invite you to subscribe. If you're already a subscriber, thanks for taking a risk on this video. As I mentioned, I remained unsponsored, so you are getting my unadulterated opinions. All right, if you like this video, do these things to make my video more popular. Gonna wrap this up, catch you on the next one.